Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Galetz, and I'm an industry education coordinator working with the Regina District Industry Education Council and SunWest School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Bevan Mann, Larry Cadler, and Kevin Powell, who all work as midstream process operators employed by Gibson Energy. I'm proud to say that all three are former students of mine at Rosetown Central High School, and today they'll tell us about their work in the oil fields. And then it's in the Kindersley area, isn't it, guys? Yeah, you betcha. Yeah. Yeah. Just a reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and will appear on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you or others to view in the future. If you'd like to request any students who watch this session, go to our website at www.rdiec.ca and complete the student uh, survey that can be found near the top of the webpage. Completion of the survey gets your name in a monthly draw for a $50 gift card. So once again, the website is www.rdiec.ca. Welcome guys, I'll turn it over to you. Perfect, thanks Kevin. Hello everyone, um, I'm Bevan Mann. Uh, the big guy to the left is Kevin Cowell and this is Larry Cadler. Like Kevin said, we're uh, all uh, former students of, us, of his um, at the RCHS in Rosetown. That's where some of us excelled and some of us didn't. <laughs> um, so we're gonna talk to you about midstream process operations today. I'll just give a quick introduction on all of us. Um, so like I said, I'm Devin Mann. Um, I've been in the oil industry for 11 years now, coming up 10 years in 2022 with Gibson Energy. Prior to my employment at Gibson's, I completed my pre-employment industrial mechanics, also known as Millwright, at SIAST in Saskatoon. Um, following school, I worked on some pipeline and oil field maintenance crews, um, as well as some hydrovacuum and boiler operation work. This was a great way to see the different working parts of the oil field industry. This also got me a foot in the door at Gibson's. I started off as a process operator five. During this time, I completed my gas processing operator course at SAIT through correspondence. Uh, this led to my current role of manager of facilities and pipelines for the Kendersley area. <clears throat> Larry Cadler, right here. Um, Larry worked in the auto body repair industry for 12 years. In 2012, we realized a job change was needed. Larry enrolled in power engineering at Great, Great Plains College, um, it, that's in Kindersley. He received his uh, fourth pass power engineering ticket. Larry did his practicum steam time in Bonneville, Alberta at a Pengrove facility. Um, following his practicum, he was hired on as a fourth pass power engineer trainee where he worked eight days on, six days off. After three months of working up north, he wanted to move closer to home. Larry applied at Gibson Energy and was hired as a process operator. Larry started off as a process operator five and worked his way up to a process operator one now. We'll get into those levels further into the slideshow. Uh, Larry also completed his gas processing operations course through SAIT, um, also through correspondence. He has now been at Gibson's for eight years and enjoys his line of work. Kevin Cow to my left. Um, after high school, Kevin attended Great Plains College in Kindersley, where he received his fourth class power engineering and heavy oil operating certificate. Kevin then took a job by Consul Saskatchewan, where he was hired as an operator at a CO2 facility. The company ended up going bankrupt and Kevin was back on the job church. Kevin wanted to work and reside near Rosetown, although power engineering jobs were difficult to come by in the area. Kevin ended up accepting a job at Transgas in Colville. At Transgas, uh, Kevin worked as a district uh, mechanic operator where he worked on large natural gas compressors and operated a lean oil absorption gas plant for eight years. Through apprenticeship program at Transgas, he achieved his, uh, his mill rate and red seal certificate. That was through SIAST as well. Um, still wanting to move closer to Rosetown, he uh, took on a contract oil operating position with Raging River where he worked for approximately one year before being hired on with Gibson's. Um, uh, where was it here? Kevin enjoyed his position as a contract operator, but with a baby on the way, it made him realize the importance of having health benefits and working as an employee versus a contract position. Kevin has been a process operator for seven years and is currently at a process operator two level. So a little bit uh, about Gibson's, just a quick little thing. Uh, Gibson Energy is a leading oil focused infrastructure company headquartered in Calgary, Alberta, with nearly 12 million barrels of storage and over 500 kilometers of crude oil pipelines. We touch one in every four barrels produced in Western Canada. 
I'm going to pass it over to Kevin here. He's going to tell you a little bit about what <clears throat> him and Larry do in the field. So what does a process operator do? Uh, operate and monitor processing equipment in the custom treating and terminal facilities. You monitor truck offloading and crude oil, butane and produced water, crude oil treating, product separation and product blending, disposal of produced water down an injection well, equipment operation and maintenance such as pumps, well heads, instrumentation and electrical, uh, buildings, skid steers, trucks, trailers, pretty much everything. Ensuring process oil is to uh, spec for pipeline transfer. Computer data entry of safe work permits, truck unload and load tickets, reports and other documents as required. While in this position, you'll find yourself making numerous trips to the office kitchen for snacks, therefore developing uh, the operator belly, like we'll call it the Ops 20. Pipeline operation, routine maintenance of pipeline, including pigging, corrosion inhibitors, uh, wax solvents, and cathodic protection. Uh, least automatic custody transfer, that's our lack pump. So that's uh, other companies that pump oil into our pipeline. Uh, inline pig inspection, which is electronic smart pig. Uh, it's a tool that is ran through the pipeline uh, to determine uh, corrosion depths within the pipeline, like how deep it is. <clears throat> um, daily, we enter all truck and un all truck loading and unloading and pipeline volume transfers into a database linked with our head office in Calgary. Uh, complete inspection rounds within the facility, so I'd be writing down pressures, temperatures, averages, chemical rates, tank levels. Uh, cuts are taken by collecting a small sample of oil from our treating vessel or pipeline and spinning it in a centrifuge to determine the BS and W, which is the basic solids and water. This ensures it is clean enough to ship down that pipeline. Uh, fill out safe work permit forms for any contractors on site. Routine maintenance pigging is completed on the pipeline daily. This is when a rubber or form foam plug is pushed through the pipeline uh, to remove wax and uh, water off the inner walls of the pipeline. Where we work, uh, Gibson Energy has two facilities in our area as well as three connecting pipelines. Uh, Gibson Plato South facility is located near Plato, Saskatchewan. So that's pretty much in between Aston and Elrose. And the uh, North facility is located Northeast of uh, Kindersley. Our pipeline connects the two facilities and carries along to a third party terminal where oil is then sold. Uh, Gibson's has operations in Canada and US, including Calgary, Edmonton, Hardesty, Moose Jaw, Houston, Texas, and lots more in Alberta. So every company is different, but I'll just kind of give you the lowdown, lowdown on how uh, the levels and opportunities work with Gibson Energy even in a role like ours. So um, you start as off as a trainee. It's uh, we call it a process operator five, and uh, once you uh, prove your competency and uh, some uh, internal training, uh, you can be moved up to a process operator four, through a three, through a two, to a one, um, a lead position. You'll overlook all uh, process operators one to five, uh, supervisors, uh, and management, and special teams. Um, there's so many different jobs within our company, engineering, maintenance, project development, like electricians, instrumentation, program automation, land, land reclamation. There's just, it, it, the list goes on. So um, there's, we have many, many special teams that come in handy for us guys in the field. Um, and then of course, the Calgary big dogs. Um, with each level, there's demands and competencies required. Uh, there are many great careers. Okay, process operation safety. Um, is this you? Oh, no, this is you. Okay, this is me. Uh, process operators play a large role when it comes to safety of personal personnel on site and the environment surrounding our operations. Uh, the oil field has come a long way in the past decade or two in the safety aspect. This is achieved by uh, comp uh, competently trained, knowing and following company guidelines, safe operating procedures, also known as SOPs, and the HSSE requirements. Um, all Gibson sites require proper PPE uh, to be worn. 
Um, operators are adequately trained in numerous safety courses. Uh, like when I say numerous, we're always in training. Um, uh, first aid, emergency response, H2S alive, fall protection, confined space, the, yeah, many, many more. So uh, safety is a big, big part of our job. Um, I know there's a lot of rumors around the oil field that people getting hurt and it's uh, kind of backyard rodeo style, but uh, that's not the case anymore. Uh, rewards of the occupation, I'll hand this over to Larry. So rewards of occupation, great home life, work-life balance. As we all said, we moved home, moved closer to home. We worked seven on, seven off and home every night, which is a big deal for all of us. Uh, we're contributing to world energy, use of pipelines, rail, and safe, reliable transportation of crude oil, contributing to new ways of effective energy solutions and greenhouse gases, continuously learning and improving skills in the area, and paychecks. Of course, everyone loves paychecks. <laughs> uh, challenges of our occupation uh, are working with demand of consumers, keeping up with uh, training demands, which is huge with the safety that's coming out in the oil field, staying innovative to keep up with the changes in resources and regulations, which is another big key part as the government keeps pushing stuff on us, um, keeping up with the industry changes fast paced. Uh, operators are often on call, which results in late nights and away and time away from home, which is usually every other week for me and Kevin. So there's been many, many nights where we haven't got home or come home at all for two days. Uh, the skill requirements for this job is basic computer skills, uh, valid driver's license, first aid, CPR, H2S Alive, confined space, fall protection, WMS TDG, safety courses. Uh, you got to work well in a team setting as well as working alone, which we have a great team at our Plato facilities. Uh, mechanical knowledge, which is huge. Uh, we don't need any secondary school diploma, but certificates are required. However, there is internal training required to move up in the company. Most employees in our area have some sort of previous oil field experience or secondary schooling, power engineering, industrial mechanic, gas process operator. Uh, also, a good skill would be self-motivated and works well under pressure. Uh, some other skills continued. Uh, in this position, there is a wide range of personal skills. One operator may be very mechanically inclined and the other skilled on the computer side of things. This is a great balance in the right team setting. The industry is coming, becoming reliant on automation <laughs> as the bigger. world evolves. One thing in this position we have all learned, it can be intimidating trying and learning new things. If you're comfortable, you're not usually growing. Um, so just another, uh, Larry touched on the educational requirements, but uh, so high school diploma is required, although secondary schooling and power engineering, electrical, all the things I listed previous, um, there's many, many things within Gibson's, but for this position, um, just a high school diploma, um, some experience in oil field, of course, is preferred as well as any post-secondary schooling um, and also up to date. Uh, safety training with those courses that we mentioned earlier. Uh, salary and benefits. Operating positions can range from uh, 50000 a year to 120000 plus. Um, depends on companies and stuff, but uh, bonuses, overtime, uh, you can make a fairly good living at this position. Um, Gibson's offers full benefits, although there are many contract operator positions that do not, uh, depending on the company. Pension plans are offered with match and company share options. Holidays, uh, depending on your position uh, and time with the company, determines your annual uh, allocation of hours for uh, holiday. So yeah, um, usually starting out about three weeks and uh, yeah, working up from there. Um, typical hours worked for uh, operator, 12 hour days, uh, seven days on, seven days off. Some, uh, some other companies in this profession are eight and six, nine and five, 10 hour days. So um, yeah, they uh, varies throughout companies. Uh, just a few pictures here before we get to some questions and answers. And so these are some of uh, the things we talked about that uh, in, our, in the roles here. So this is the smart uh, pig ILI tool. Uh, actually, it was ran through the pipeline. It uh, records and 
it does a it does a, the list the list goes on what it does, but uh, mainly for guys at our level, it determines the wall thickness of the pipeline and the corrosion depths. Um, yeah, and these are the maintenance pigs that we spoke about. Uh, we run them through almost daily through our pipeline. It scrapes the inner walls of the pipeline, removing the wax, uh, water in the low spots, all of these uh, things that are corrosive. Uh, and then this is uh, where the pigs are received and sent above ground and back into the ground to the pipeline. So uh, just a little uh, look at what the inside of our pump buildings look like. These are all pumps, rows of pumps, um, shipping into the pipelines, through the treater vessels throughout the facilities. Um, there's a butane injection over here um, where we uh, inject butane into the oil, uh, lowering the densities. Um, this is, uh, so after that smart pig is ran through the pipeline, determining the corrosion depths, we find a bad spot and we dig it up and replace it with new piping. And this is kind of what it looks like. So a little video here, you guys can watch uh, uh, the guys that uh, are on my team here completing that work. Just a little time lapse. Any questions and uh, stuff for us? Yeah, that's that was really good, guys. I I learned a lot about that. I, I always marvel when I see those second to last screens there, where you had that all the inside the pump house there and all those pipes going every which way. I kind of mm -hmm. just that just confuses a guy like me who doesn't understand how any of that works. That you guys can go in and and work on that stuff and make sure everything's functioning. Uh, it, it would take a fair amount of skill and technical knowledge, I, I would imagine, to figure that out. And I could see where you can get the mechanical knowledge would have to come in pretty handy too for that. A uh, couple of questions. Uh, I think Larry, you preferred, you you mentioned uh, on call. So what, what kind of situation would you get called out for where you might have to be out for the night or that, you know, like would it be something broke down in a pump house or? Yeah, it could be, or power outage, where we lose all the power to the facility. Oh, okay. So you pretty much go out and restart the whole facility, or your treater could be wet, so you're, you will get a call out that your spec on your pipeline is out, so you will have to recycle everything to make the oil clean. There's many call outs, but that's just a few of them. So the pipelines kind of go 24-7 then kind of thing? They're always pumping something through? Yeah, always 24-7. Okay. Bevan, just a question for you. Like I maybe said at the very beginning, what you mentioned, Larry was process operator level one. Kevin was two. What's your position in in that in that scale there? Uh, a few years ago, or four or five years ago, here I took over the uh, the manager position at the facility. The okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I think I think just a comment on that is just like there's three three local guys working in working close to home. And yet you're, you know, you advanced, all three of you advanced in the, in the same, same system on the same team. That's kind of, that's pretty cool. Um, so pipeline repairs, you were showing that little video of the pipeline repair. Do you guys, does your team do that? Or does that, you get called people or some other people from Gibson or contractors get called in for that? So um, for that particular job that was in the pictures there, um, we are, uh, my team does a large part of it, um, but like for, as in for cutting, we will purge the pipeline, uh, remove all the oil, uh, everything out of it, um, get it ready, purge down, uh, um, depressurized and ready for the welders to come in. They'll cut the piping out and then we will, uh, like in, you've seen in the video, uh, put on that protective coating. Uh, it's a very large part of the pipeline, um, just to keep all contaminates out of it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, uh, there's a, big role that uh, we do in those kind of things. But as for the welding and the x-ray of the piping, no, we don't do that. That's all yeah. contracted out. Okay. Yep. Um, so just to get, when you say offloading and loading trucks, so trucks would bring in crude oil from, from wells to your facility. Yeah. That, that's what they do there. And then they, then that it gets fed into your tanks and then your tanks send it through the pipeline. That's kind of the process. Yep. So the producers will bring in, uh, bring their oil in via truck into our uh, facilities. They'll offload through a 
through some piping into our tanks. From the tanks, it goes into a treater vessel uh, where it's uh, combined with heat, retention time, and chemicals. It'll drop out all of your, your water, your solids, your sands, your, everything out of it, and you'll get on-spec oil come out of the top of your treater into a clean tank, and yeah. the water and the solids into a slop tank or a produced water tank. Um, that on spec oil um, is then shipped down to the pipeline from our facilities. Yes. Okay. So again, I'm asking lots of questions here because I really don't know much about it. It's kind of strange that you live right next to the oil field and unless you're working in it, you don't really understand it necessarily. Um, sure. Like Gibson's is one, one company that's got, you said there's two, so you have two stations there. So how many other, you know, roughly how many other companies work in that Kindersley, Eston, Colville area? Quite a few or that do similar things to what you guys do? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. 15, 15 plus. plus yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's quite a few then. Yeah. yeah Not too many of them operate pipelines. So there's only about three. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. There's only about three companies in the area that do what we do, um, competitors of ours. Um, but uh, when when we say 15, we're talking producers, you know, like the Crescent Points and the Tyne Energies, the, the people that are actually bringing the oil out of the ground. So, um, but yeah, there's there are many companies in the area. Okay, um, one more question and I think I'm done. Your team, how many, you're like at the two plants that the Plato and the Plato North or whatever they were called, how many how many guys is that involved or how many people? There is uh, eight of us, uh, seven and then myself. Okay. Um, yeah, you betcha. So we're uh, smaller yeah. facilities, but we, uh, at our hardest, this uh, can you guys still see the screen, the picture? Yeah. Yeah. With the lights, this is our hardest ski facility. There's a couple other companies uh, intertwined in here as well, but uh, I, I don't know the numbers, but there's there's hundreds of people that work for uh, Gibson Energy throughout all of our facility, big facilities. So, yep. Okay. Or do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, guys, I just want to uh, ask you, like, I, I'm always amazed at the technology and the monitoring that uh, – is at play and how it's improved you've been in the industry for a while and you've probably seen the the changes you talk about the constant learning that you have to do can you speak to the to the safety uh end of uh of shipping oil by pipeline just so that those people who uh have questions about the industry uh like absolutely that's a good question um yeah um we we really didn't with our 10 years that we've had in we really didn't get to see the bad part of it because um, it's, it's been good since we've been in it. Uh, but just to put in perspective, if we lose a five gallon pail or two five gallon pails of oil from our pipeline somewhere, or it's not metered through our, through there, we'll know within minutes. So um, when they talk about pipeline leaks and the dangerous, the dangers of pipeline, we, we know when, when oil has gone missing. So um, yeah, it's quite amazing the, the technology behind it the monitoring systems yeah it's within it's crazy they will there is always a person over watching that or a computer i should say and as soon as it leaks it knows it's just off of pressure and flow and it'll know instantly and it'll shut your pipeline down yeah, yeah. okay good the uh, safety requirements too for for employees uh the industry uh Back when I graduated from high school, there wasn't much for, for safety. I worked in oil wells up in Lloyd, but the safety requirements, you spoke very highly that it comes first with everything. And, and uh, as far as, uh, you know, your, your particular uh, occupation, uh, the safety precautions that are put in place make it a, a pretty safe environment in which to work, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and our Gibson prides themselves on their safety programs as well. Um, you know what, we probably spend more time, uh, <laughs> spend more time on, uh, practicing our safety uh, practices and stuff than we do our actual positions. So, uh, which we all enjoy that part of it because everyone likes to get home safe. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks guys. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, I'll probably stop the recording now. Perfect.